this week marking the eighth anniversary since the promulgation of the 2010 constitution that established the Supreme Court as the highest court in the land. This anniversary comes in the wake of the Supreme Court Deputy President uh, Philomena Mwilu's prosecution for graft. But what has been the reform journey of the Kenyan judiciary since the promulgation of the 2010 constitution? And how has the Supreme Court fared through the eight years? A KTN's political affairs reporter, Mrimi Mwangi, interrogates on our continuing coverage, State of the Constitution. With the National Rainbow Alliance accession to power in 2002, President President Mwai Kibaki's pledge to root out corruption in government hung over the country like the proverbial sword of the Democrats. And the first judicial casualty was the late Justice Samuel Oguk, a long-serving High Court judge who was within NAC's first 25 days in power, arrested for suspected fraud. It was a first. A serving Superior Court judge set to face criminal charges before a junior magistrate. But the case would take a dramatic twist after Justice Oguk threatened to personally expose all corrupt government officials in both the Kibaki and retired President Daniel Arap Moy's regimes. Oguk silently resigned a month later, two weeks before the state dropped all the charges against him. Fifteen years later, only a day after the 2010 Constitution's 8th anniversary, and the country's most powerful lady judge, Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, was on the dock. On graft charges, which could not only bring her illustrious 32-year legal career to a halt, but also threatens to dent the image of the highest court in the land and, by extension, the entire judiciary. The fight against corruption is important. Indeed, is timely, but we cannot take that as a panacea to literally roughshod rights of important state officers. Mwilu's prosecution, it would appear, is the Supreme Court and by extension the judiciary's lowest moment under the 2010 Constitution. <laughs> The Chief Justice David Maragachi at bench hit global headlines on the 1st of September 2017 after nullifying President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election in the August 8th polls. The first such verdict in Africa and only the fourth in the world, a ruling which instantly put the Kenyan judiciary on a collision course with the Kenyatta administration. I have always felt that we in the legal professions and we as Kenyans did not do enough to shield the judges from the attacks. And the attacks on the judges became so vicious that I personally believe that the judges were bro beaten. On November the 19th of 2017, the Supreme Court did not generate as much enthusiasm after upholding President Kenyatta's win in the chaotic October 26th repeat election. Analysts argued that the judges might have given the ruling under duress following a series of events including the October 24th shooting of Mwilu's bodyguard a day before the court could rule on a critical case that sought to postpone the repeat poll the second election petition was coming, I believe that the judges were brobeaten and that the courage that they had showed initially may have disappeared. And I believe that that may have taken a toll not just on the Supreme Court but on the judiciary generally. However, Mwilu's tribulations have rekindled memories of retired Supreme Court Judge Philip Tunoy's predicament two years ago. A whistleblower who claimed to be known to Tunoy accused the judge of pocketing 200 million shillings from Mex Nairobi Governor Ivan Skidero, reportedly to write a favorable ruling in a petition challenging the governor's election. Unlike Mwilu's case, Tunoy's process went through the Judicial Service Commission, but the tribunal investigating the allegations terminated the probe. <laughs> After Tunoy retired from the Supreme Court alongside former Deputy Chief Justice Karl Panarawal, following an equally dramatic legal tussle on the retirement age of judges, 
This was described in legal circles as the lowest moment of the Supreme Court under retired Chief Justice Willie Mutunga. Mutunga also left for retirement on the same day. He recused himself from the retirement age case alongside Justices Mohammed Ibrahim and Smokin Wanjala. I think we now have a fairly stable Supreme Court. I think that those were unfortunate incidents, but uh, again, the beauty of it is that they are all catered for in the Constitution, and the right machinery was used to resolve that dispute. But all is not lost. We will achieve the Supreme Court of India in Kenya one day. We will achieve the House of Lords in England, and we will achieve the Supreme Court of America one day. This country will get there. For now, these are some of the problems and challenges we are facing, but I believe that uh, they can be addressed. Maraga, Mwilu and Justice Isaac Lenaola filled the three vacancies before the 2017 polls. Maraga. At 67, Maraga only has three years to his retirement. Stop. And even with Mwilu fighting her graft allegations, a succession battle, it appears, looms yet again at the country's top court. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News.